Kia ora, and welcome to the CoreLogic Property Market Update for April 2021. Wow, we've been calling 2021 the year of property politics for a while now, and that has well and truly been confirmed off the back of the government's housing announcement on the 23rd of March. The details of the announcement caught many people by surprise, including ourselves. In particular, the decision to eventually remove the ability for investors to claim interest costs as a deductible expense on existing properties seemed to come out of nowhere. On the face of it, the change is a bold one. However, due to the phased nature of its introduction and exemption for new builds, the impact of the market will be reduced. The tax changes essentially encourage investors to have increased equity in their investments in order to reduce their interest expense. This may see a change in the mix of active buyers in the market, with fewer heavily indebted investors. But the long-term attractiveness of the residential property market will remain, with property owners still able to leverage existing equity to purchase an asset, and have someone else pay off the mortgage. The fact that alternative assets, such as term deposits, aren't paying much either, is another reason to think people will stick with property. While many people will want to avoid triggering a large Brightline liability too, Expectation of continued rates of capital growth, especially for existing properties, will need to be tempered, as interest for this type of property has reduced. However, pent-up demand from would-be first home buyers, as well as equity-rich investors, will likely step into the breach to reduce the likelihood of values significantly falling. First home buyers may feel the need to favour existing properties, after increasingly turning toward new builds in the last few years, but which will now likely attract greater competition. Evidence from the CoreLogic buyer classification series shows first home buyer share of newer builds almost doubling from 15% in 2017 to 29% so far in 2021. Meanwhile, the ability for landlords to pass on the increased cost of owning property to their tenants may be limited. The phased nature of the interest deductibility changes should keep the additional tax bills for existing investors in the hundreds to begin with. The most exposed investors will be those who bought recently and based on a mortgage of about $570,000, which is much higher than the average size of approved mortgages, the increased tax bill in the second year would be less than $700. A not insignificant cost to cover, but small on the scale of typical growth in capital over the last year of almost $100,000, and a far cry from the full amount in year five, which will be closer to $5,000. But the crucial thing is that landlords have time to adjust. The relative consistency in rental growth over the years despite numerous changes increasing landlord costs, illustrates the higher likelihood that rents are anchored by incomes. In other words, tenants can't pay what they don't earn. Rents will continue to increase, but we don't think there'll be a step change across the board due specifically to these changes. So, having covered off the hottest of hot topics in the market, let's quickly take a look at the latest data leading into the big announcement. The measure of most relevance and interest is recent property value growth with the CoreLogic House Price Index increasing by 2.2% over the month, taking the annual rate to 16.1%, the highest rate in over 15 years. The growth was relatively consistent across our main centres, including in Tauranga, which previously showed some weakness in February's index. We were sceptical of the one-month value fall being a sign of true change then, and the bounce back in March has indicated it was likely a blip in the index. One consistent factor amongst all of this is the persistently low level of properties listed for sale. In the first week of April, TradeMe reported a total of a little over 22,000 properties for sale, a drop of 31% compared to the same time in 2020. With limited supply, the price pressure on the few properties available remains. In terms of the outlook, perhaps the greatest impact of the government's announced changes is that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand will now have less pressure to step in to help the government in their stated aim to support more sustainable house prices, including by dampening investor demand for existing housing stock, which would improve affordability for first home buyers. Therefore, our previous view that the Reserve Bank were likely to implement restrictions on interest-only lending now looks very unlikely, as they take the opportunity to first see how the tax changes play out in the short term. This is especially probable given the increased restrictions on loan-to-value ratios kick in on the 1st of May, with almost all investors then requiring a 40% deposit, unless buying a new build. Any consideration for the official cash rate starting to lift has also reduced, with the Reserve Bank recently reiterating the continued requirement to stimulate our economy, which likely re-entered a technical recession. 
and continues to suffer from our closed borders. The quarantine-free travel bubble to Australia and early stage rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine shows promise for the future, but our economy has some way to go to get back to normal. So the Reserve Bank's monetary policy settings will remain stimulatory in the near future. As witnessed from the last month, nothing stays static for long though. So make sure to check out and subscribe to our weekly property market podcast and bookmark the research tab at corelogic.co.nz to stay across every new development as it happens. Mā te wa.